So even though this is a huge mess, there's disagreements everywhere and uh, debates going on, there must be some sort of consensus or agreement across, across the board of how much protein you actually need as a bodybuilder or, or strength athlete. Yeah, that's a very good question to ask. And when I was reading through all these studies, the only two things that I really found that you know different studies agreed across the board on were that number one, consuming very high amounts of protein, such as two grams of protein per kilogram body weight, did not seem to give any advantages in building muscle. One study actually found that there were no differences in strength or muscle mass gains in a group consuming 1.35 grams mm -hmm. of protein per kilogram body weight and another group consuming 2.6 grams yeah. of protein. The second thing that they seem to agree on is that the only time where there might be uh, an advantage and it might actually be a little advantageous to be consuming high amounts of protein such as 2 grams per kilogram body weight is if you're on a caloric deficit, so if you're undergoing rapid fat loss. So as long as you're eating a calorically sufficient diet, you should never go above two grams per kilogram of protein. So let's move on to exactly what we do need. So the RDA, or the recommended daily allowance for protein, is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So what many of you guys want to know is not just the levels required to keep us from becoming deficient, but the levels which are optimal for promoting muscle growth. And this is where things start getting interesting because most large-scale studies are actually done with a health and deficiency perspective rather than uh, looking at athletic performance. So when we searched the scientific literature, there was a lot of disagreements over whether or not athletes should be consuming more or less protein than the average person. Some scientists have theorized that though athletes do have higher rates of muscle protein synthesis and may therefore use more protein athletes also seem to use protein more efficiently resulting in no big change in requirements for protein many studies have actually gone and stated that higher protein intakes are not necessary or advantageous for building muscle that actually the most important factor determining you know optimal muscle building is caloric intake. Other studies, however, have stated that protein requirements for athletes can be, uh, depending you know, on what type of athlete, can be as much as 100% higher, especially in resistance trained athletes, such yeah. as bodybuilders. So, twice as much. Exactly. So, you know, as you can see, it's, it can become difficult to provide an exact evidence-based yeah. um, recommendation on, on protein intake mm -hmm. when there's this, this much disagreement within the scientific literature. Yeah. And a lot of organizations which are involved with athletes actually end up giving recommendations based on practical experience rather than you know evidence-based or research-based recommendations so the higher recommendations within the literature include 1.2 to 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight for endurance athletes and 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight for resistance or power athletes such as bodybuilders you know just keep in mind that this all is a very high end of the spectrum and uh, you know the actual real requirements for health and for optimal muscle building may be a lot lower and on the studies that we did look at uh, they actually mentioned that our authors mentioned that there is a lack of evidence in the area of uh, how much protein you need for optimizing muscle growth and the ones that do focus solely on physical performance are very very small studies and typically very short and this is actually a very important point as it may affect the power of a study so the power of the study is the study's ability to predict accurately predict or accurately assess the relationship between variables so studies that have small sample sizes short duration or poor study design may give a scientist a, an inaccurate picture of what's going on and are therefore low power studies while larger studies with larger sample sizes are usually considered higher power this is why a meta-analysis is considered to be a high power study because a meta-analysis compiles data from multiple different studies giving their results a higher ability to predict accurate relationships between variables so in other words not all studies are equal so you might find a small study or low power study uh, saying one thing and then seeing another study that is much larger scale saying something completely different uh, in that case you're much better off trusting the larger study because it's just going to be more reliable also results are susceptible uh, to manipulation uh, by the study design so you should always keep an eye open uh, when going through different findings from different studies yeah, and that's exactly why you can't just you know go through different studies and just look at the conclusion you actually yeah. you know if you really really want to 
get something out of a study, you actually have to look at the study design, you know, the mm -hmm. methodology of the study. You can't yeah. just look at different <laughs> conclusions. I, I found the conclusion yeah. that I wanted to find, that's proof for me. Yeah, you know? because, you know, that's what people usually do. Like, you know, keyboard warriors, they go to Google and, and I don't know, type that, you know, eggs are the best for boosting testosterone and they might find a little article or a study there yeah, and they take a, it as truth and exactly. that is not the case. <laughs> might find a low power study funded by the egg industry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that happens all the time, guys. It's not a joke. So where does all this leave us? The bottom line is that more quality studies need to be done on this matter, you know, with protein intake and the effects of different protein intakes on muscle protein synthesis, especially, uh, you know, specifically in athletes such as bodybuilders. And this could, for example, be done with a prospective study where they follow bodybuilders on different protein intakes for a different amount of time and then, you know, assess for any sort of cause and effect relationships with mm -hmm. the cause being the, you know, the increased protein intake and the effect being increased muscle protein synthesis. Yeah, and keep in mind that large scale studies uh, are very, very expensive and you know it, it takes a lot of time and uh, which is probably why there aren't that many done or if you know no large scale studies for bodybuilders are done at all I think as far as we know we can't find any so uh, until those are done we cannot give more specific uh, evidence based uh, recommendations for you guys also remember that we're talking about protein intake for optimal muscle growth and uh, you know you don't need to obsess about protein intake uh, when you're looking to be healthy because as long as you're eating a calorically sufficient diet you don't have to worry about protein so as things are right now in the scientific literature if you are serious about putting on as much muscle mass as possible and you want to be safe in terms of taking in enough protein to promote that muscle growth then a safe range to aim for is 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight understanding that this is just to be on the safe side and true requirements may actually be lower than that. And also a very good thing about this is that, you know, eating less protein means you can increase your carbs and fats, which are the tasty parts of, of uh, you know, most foods anyway. There's always loads of different people watching these videos. Yeah. So when he says, you know, take your protein intake down, I think he's talking more to the people who are actually eating very high. So like supplementing with yep. protein powders and all this. Sure. Obviously, if you're eating only whole foods, where you're a raw vegan and you're eating, you know, and you're gonna eat even less protein than that actually may uh, hurt yeah. your goals in terms of putting on exactly. muscle because you, if you're not taking, you know, protein powders or supplements, mm -hmm. you're definitely gonna have to actually plan out that you're eating quality protein yeah. throughout the day. And that is why protein powders come in handy uh, when you're like your main goal is bodybuilding because it's very convenient. If not, you have to really, you know, make sure that you're getting all the quality protein from food sources which is always a little bit challenging, but always possible. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope it was constructive. I hope you learned something. All the studies are linked in the description box, so check them out. I encourage everyone to go through the literature instead of just taking our word for it. And uh, yeah, subscribe to Leo's channel. Link is also in the description box below. Amazing science videos and a uh, very knowledgeable, handsome young man, I must say. <laughs> Thumbs up for Leo's handsome face. All right, that's enough. Peace out.